Good stuff, <laughs> man. How you doing? We're doing amazing out here. Come on, you guys. Show me some love right here for James <laughs> Dentley right here. So, James, uh, I know you're in Chicago. It's two hours later for you. I'm taking time away from your precious family, and I'm just really honored to have you here right now with this uh, audience. And, uh, I, I, you know, normally, James, I – always like to ask questions because most people aren't very good speakers and I got to kind of carry the conversation but uh, you are definitely not a, a stranger into public speaking so here's what I want to do is just turn this over to you I'm gonna mute my uh, microphone take me off the video I'm gonna be here watching you behind the scenes and I'm gonna let you take it away and go to like 810 is that okay with you uh, I think I'd make it work yeah, I know you can. All right, ladies and gentlemen, James Dentley. All right, James, all right. take it away. Well, first of all, I'm very thankful, humble, to get a chance to, uh, to, to speak to each and every one of you all. I had some very stark conversations with John earlier about who was really going to be on the line. What can I give you that would really help you and to help you achieve the goals that you dream about, to help you get unstuck, to help you to be able to soar higher, to help you realize your true potential. And I'll tell you, the relationship I have with John, Arlene, Matthew, all the children, and they're, they're adults now, I might as well say my cousins. <laughs> I'm Uncle James to everybody. But, you know, it's so incredible because not only is John Shin for real when he shows up with these slides and he's mentoring you, but the way he lives, but also who he is and how that not only passes on to his children in his household, but in everyone who works with him. You know, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And really understanding how to create wealth and how to really get your life back. And really, money is just a part of it. Once you get money as an issue out of the way, then you can focus on these other things. But I will tell you, it's really the culture and the character. And these are things you can't, you can't manufacture. You can't fake those things. Those things are just really real. And they're very consistent. So I'm very thankful for you, John, that allowed me to share some information. I believe it can help each and every one of you all. And... Um, and now I want to go and get started. So for those of you who are listening, I have a question. If there was a way that I could say how great you could be, would you listen to me? And if there was a price that you could pay that would give you the life that you seek, are you willing to pay that price this day? And if there was some work that you could do, would you roll up your sleeves? Yes, because that work is on you. And if there was a promise of silver and gold, of pleasures and treasures and fortunes, I'm told, would you do what it takes no matter how tough? Would you dare never quit when the going gets rough? Would you do something great? Would you let it build you? You have a dream and a vision, but there's something else you must do. Because while you're building that dream and those visions, they also have to build you. So if there was a way that I could say how great you could be, would you listen to me? You know, I've been in the industry of personal development for about 30 years now. Uh, home-based businesses successfully for over a quarter of a century. I've owned several businesses and I have an incredible family and I, I've learned how to not only manage my time, but to control it too, and to teach other people about time management. I'm going to touch on a few things tonight. I'm going to touch on several areas, but they're all going to come together and we're going to throw them all in the crock pot. And by the time the light goes off, which tells you that this dish is done, then you should have something that should resonate with you for, and get you through the week and hopefully create those anchors and those tiebacks that are gonna help you have something to trigger back on and, and something that can help you. So I want you to take notes, even though we know that even when you take notes, we only retain seven to 10% of what we hear on a daily basis. So I want you to do me a favor and listen with me to me with intention. Now, you hear with your ears, you listen with your emotions. Even when you're reading books, when you get that book, the Way Rich Agents Think, or my book, The Five Frequencies of High Performance, which is right over one of my, my shoulder. Um, I want you to learn to read books with your emotions. I want you to use all of your senses. Yes, your taste, feel, touch, smell, every sense you have, I want you to learn to experience that and immerse yourself in that story. We're gonna talk about some things that's gonna help you in communication, the psychology of communication. I'm gonna talk a lot about mindset, frequency, paradigms, and some things when you put them together and some techniques to enrollment and some techniques to communicating on a higher level, not just in your business, but in your family and even with yourself. 
You know, Carter G. Woodson once said, every now and then I must talk to myself because sometimes I'm in need of an intelligent conversation. All right. So I want to start off with this premises that do you understand your life matters? Do you understand that you are not only beautifully and wonderfully made, that you are so unique and so rare? There's only one of you. There's only one person on the planet that has your DNA. With one strand of hair, one drop of blood or sweat or saliva, we can pick you out of a lineup of four or five billion people. No one else has your fingerprint. No one else has your voice inflection. No one else has your spirit. It can be close, it can be like it, but they won't have yours. That means that you are very rare. There's only one of you. And the last time I checked, things that are rare are extremely valuable. And John Posty, he talked a lot about financial and poor. And a lot of these things start up in our mindset, our paradigm, the way we think. And, and that shapes our world. It shapes our perception of what's real in our world. And we fight to hold on to that. We fight with everything we have. I'm going to ask you to, right now, just allow me to dress you a little bit, as if I'm giving you a new shirt to put on or a blouse. You know, you get a little shirt. You don't have to like it or keep it, but right now I just want you to put it over your shoulder and feel the material. Check it out a little bit and see if you like it. And if you love what I'm offering you, that's my gift to you. It's my gift to you. Now, I've been in network marketing for many, many years. I've trained probably over a million people. Uh, some audiences, many audiences, over 20,000 people for a decade, uh, four or five times a year, and then another 10 or 15,000 in Europe. And then daily, I, I lived in that space. But the fact of the matter is there's nothing so unique and special about me because we're all born with some stuff that we can serve the world even greater and step into it. So first of all, I want you to understand that you matter. And I want you just to think about this concept that you may be just one person in this world, but to someone else, you can be the world to that one person. There are people out there waiting to hear your story. When we choose not to win, then someone else pays the price for that. So the question I'll ask you, the second question is, okay, who loses if you decide not to win? Who suffers if you decide not to try? How do you get better? And how do we get our children to be better if they don't pick themselves up? You know, when a, when a baby is born, and even in a, the last trimester, when they're in the mother's womb, all their information comes from a recall, from what they see, what they hear, and vibrations they feel, even inside a mother's uh, bag of soup, so to speak even inside the body. Those paradigms are shaped because if you got a computer, if you got this computer and you're one years old, two years old, there's no information downloaded for you. It's about what you see. So a baby's crawling on the floor and uh, how long does it really take for a baby to walk? Okay, let's say it's a year. And after a year goes by, the baby's not walking. So we're gonna get rid of the baby, right? Yeah, you take after your auntie, right? Boop. No, 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 no. How long does it, does it take a baby to walk? Well, until the baby walks. But a, when a baby looks around and through recall, they're seeing everyone else walking and it's unnatural to be the only person that can't walk. So the baby tries to walk, the baby gets, stands up and the baby falls back down. But does the baby stay down? No, because the baby has already made a decision, the commitment, they're already locked into a new truth. That's their paradigm at that time. So the baby gets up and they fall. They get up and they fall. Thank goodness we have pampers and diapers and their butt be oh, totally destroyed like a baboon. But thank goodness that we got that little cush there. But then the baby, uh, you grab them by the finger and you help them up and you help them walk a little bit. And then the babies uh, see something they, they want on a table, something bright and colorful, something they're curious about. And they pull themselves up and they walk around the edge of the table and they will try their best and most of the time succeed in getting the thing that they have focused their attentions on. You see, most people, as we get grown, as we become adults and we become more realistic, we suffer from the weakness of our attention and the poverty of our imagination. When you're a child, you're fearless. Remember, you used to jump ropes or some ladies hot scotch or you would uh, do the double dutch. I don't know if you know about that. Or you play these great games and you jump and you do these daring acts. You put your finger in a light socket because you don't believe it. You know, they have to lock up all the cabinets because everything is Kool-Aid. Even if it had a skull and crossbone on it, that must be the real good stuff. And we're, ex we're explorers. We go out there, we try everything. We take all of these risks because all we know is that we are downloading more information. Now, when you take that child and 
look at look at your life and somebody says, well, you don't deserve that or you're bad. See, when your subconscious mind, you can't tell the difference if they really mean it. All you know is they said you're bad and we take upon that identity. Most of us are driven by eight-year-olds. All of us are driven still to this day by the eight-year-old child that their perception and the story that came from the perception drives our life. So I would submit to you that 95% of their actions are subconscious, only 5% are conscious. Now your consciousness is your creation when you create. Van Gogh said, I, 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 I dreamed of my painting and then I painted my dream. You gotta have a vision and dreams you have, visions kind of have you. Because when you're locked in, I can see Van Gogh with this painting, he becomes not obsessed, but he becomes part of that person. What does that mean? That means you're rising to another frequency. So as we grow up, we rise. We're not the same people we were at five years old or 15 years old or 25 years old. We evolve. And as we evolve, the frequency changes. However, the challenge comes in is that the things that we want, that frequency is up here and our mindset is down here. See, the, our frequency is, is up here, but our, the way we think is down here because we now conform. Because the biggest challenge in the human experience is not failure, it's conformity. We fall in line. Remember, we're so unique, but somewhere down the line, we decided to be like everyone else. Not better than, but different than, and meant to work in harmony with. See, our paradigm keeps us boxed in to a, a, a cell of our own making. And when you get those walls to fall down by getting a shift in your paradigm, even in the Bible, it says, first ye be transformed by renewing of what? Of your mind, of your mind. It's really about making the shift in the way we think. Now, a lot of that can come from dissatisfaction. When, uh, when the pain of change is greater than the pain of being the same, then change will occur. You see, dissatisfaction can help you because it makes you make a move. It makes you move from where you are, and then you summon upon another frequency from where you are. You don't want to be in this frequency anymore. See, when you're on a high level of frequency, think about the times you're doing anything in your life and you're in that zone. Everything's clicking. All of us have that experience, whether you're in sports, whether you're typing, you could be texting. It's so unconscious. You're so unconsciously competent. You don't think about it. You go there. We all can be there. We have to learn how to take those skills and transfer them into the things towards the things we want and get on a frequency. Now, how do you get on that frequency? Well, you have to elevate your level of thinking. That's why it's important, number one, to have a mentor. Number two, that's important that no matter what, you want to plug in not only what John is doing, but the things he recommends. Because, you see, we've been very successful. I've been very blessed to be able to be at home since January 13th of 1995. But yes, I've lived in a car. I have an honorary doctor degree, but I have a 12th grade education with a D average. My wife's a double scientist, by the way, so I married up. I wasn't a smart one, but I was smart enough to get a smart one. So my point being that, you know, everything you want is available to you, everything. There's no magic in small dreams, but it begins with the thinking. And you have to, first of all, be aware and accept the fact that we're locked into a paradigm, the way we see the world and our place in it. And that paradigm came from our experience. You see what you live, you learn, what you learn, you practice, and what you practice, you become. And all this sets off the primary law of vibration. Now you've heard of the law of attraction a lot. That's a secondary law. The law of vibration is absolutely incredible. The law of vibration means that's energy that's transmitted. Now, first of all, we are made up of energy. We are made up of all the elements of the earth. So now we tap into the source. There's energy in the core of this earth. There's energy in a blade of grass. There's energy from the sun. There's energy all around you. You don't have to ever get energy. Somebody says, I don't have the energy. You just have to release it. Claim it. Because whatever you say is going to be your truth. The thinker thinks. Write this down. The thinker thinks. And approver proves. What does approver prove? Whatever the thinker thinks. There is one thing that every person, every leader agrees upon. No matter what they disagree upon, no matter what their, their opposites of, uh, of philosophies, is that we all will be a product of what we focus on most often. We put our focus there, we will become that. As a matter of fact, it's like um, 
see, most of the time we focus on the things we don't want. Most of the time people focus on their bills and they don't even know it. It's so subconscious. Remember, you're driven by your subconscious. You focus on your bills, your lack. Focus on, you, you, you say things like, I can't say that. When you say, I can't say that, subconscious, that makes, that's the truth. I can't do that. Then you can't. See, because whatever you say is what matters. It's about how you speak. And that's why we're going to talk about communication because when you learn the psychology of communication, to speak not only to the listening, but to the nervous system of another human being. And you learn how to free yourself up. If you're afraid of public speaking, you learn to become fully self-expressed. You are free because it was never, ever about you. When you're speaking, you are not the star of the show if you're on the stage. You're the director and the audience is a star. When you're on that stage or you're out in your sales job or you're going out for your interview, it's now about service. How do I step in here and create value for the situation? Because if you learn to create value, then that energy and that frequency is going to permeate. And even if you don't get the job, they'll, you'll walk away and they'll feel really good about you and you keep building and move from there. In other words, you learn how to become more inner directed instead of outer directed. That means the circumstances that happen around you will no longer affect you. You will learn from them because every situation has been terrible. I had, I had sarcoidosis and I was on a drug called prednisone for eight years. It's a steroid. I blew up to 374 pounds. I started off at 213, so 13 years of martial arts. Every time I got off the, the drug, I got sick. My lungs were excessively scarred. I found a way to go on natural. I found a way to solve it and get away from the pharmaceutical. I lost 120 pounds. Then I was diagnosed with cancer, but I was positive in that because I can choose how I'm going to respond to every situation because it was a gift for me. And I understood it because beforehand I could never tell someone, I know how you feel, but that was given to me. And I've been cancer free now for over three years without chemo or surgery. And it talks about something John mentioned from the very beginning, a positive mental attitude, but to believe just to truly believe that you can tell the future if you're willing to write it. But right now, I control how I'm going to respond. And I went to work and I still did my conference calls and I still built my business and I still love my family. My wife's a double scientist and physicist. She's been home for the last six or seven years. Now, but I still did that because then unbeknownst to me, my children were watching. My wife was watching. My friends were watching. The people who knew about it were watching. And all you did, all I did was build a bigger story. So I want to challenge you all to build your story because you have a story and a life worth living is worth recording and sharing. The problem is sometimes we believe that we don't count, that we don't matter, that we don't matter. And I ask the question so often, I, I can't interact with you right now. We'll open this up for Q and A a little bit later, but how much are you worth? Can I get anybody to type in the chat box right now? How much are you worth? Put a dollar on it. What are you worth? What are you worth? Somebody just type something in there. Give me a chat. What are you worth? Give me a figure. Give me a number. Whatever's in you. What are you worth? And somebody will give me a number and I'll tell you, well, let's put it like this. Well, let's just say, let's see what we got here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. We got a million dollars. Okay, great. I'm going to give you a million dollars. All I want is one foot and I want four fingers on your other hand. Will you give it to me? Oh, somebody else has over, oh, that looks like a trillion dollars. Okay, great. All right, you want to have the valuation of uh, Amazon and move it towards Apple. No problem. All right, we'll give you a trillion dollars. I want two legs. I want your eye, your right eye, your left ear. I want your arm to your elbow and give me a hand. What are you worth? What are you worth? Somebody said, I'm worth what God says I am worth. Well, if you read the Bible, now I do have an honorary doctrine in divinity. The Bible says that even in your ignorance, if you're ignorant, if you don't want to learn and grow, he says, I don't want, you can't be with me. See, because the first part of ignorance is to ignore. Ah, we got another figure. Okay. So you're worth $15 billion. You're worth a trillion dollars. Wouldn't you agree that you're all priceless? Would you agree with that? If that's true for you, somebody just say yes, type it in there. Are you priceless? Yes, okay. Here's my question. If you are priceless and you believe that, then what are you selling? What are you settling for? What are you selling for? And it's not about the money, but see, your success can be somebody else's miracle and blessing. 
You know, John and I met in an organization with nonprofits, business acceleration and giving back. That's how we met somebody's vision. And it didn't have to be perfect. Never let perfect be the enemy of the good. You operate, you just make it happen because in there magic happened because John, Arlene, myself, Kara, we came together and many other people. It came, I, I'm not on the Think and Grow Rich world tour if I wasn't there. Well, I'm not on this right now if I wasn't there. Now, someone got me there that most of you do not know. And he had a journey that got him to where he was at that moment. And whoever got him to where he was, let's say it started with his mom. If his mom didn't take the action she took to get him there, that I'm not here, John's not here, that means everyone on this Zoom would be doing something different right now. So someone you don't even know has impacted your life. That tells me that that allows you to impact. As you let your light shine, unconsciously you give other people permission to do the same. So let's shift a little bit into mindset. I know we have some network marketers here. It doesn't matter because these philosophies will help you build. I've built several companies. I work with, with Fortune 500 companies. I work with startups. I work with, I have an entrepreneur form training. We do every Thursday. I mean, we work with business. We work with nonprofits. We work with people who want to excel in their job as an entrepreneur. Okay. And in the MLM, I've been around that for 27 years as an owner, a master distributor, and a top seven figure annual for the last seven years in a row. I've only been with this company seven years, seven years in a row, seven figure earner every single year. I'm not saying that to impress you, to impress upon you. I'm going to give you the roadmap on how to do it in a short amount of time. And I'm just not going to take me along to do it, but I'm going to, the short amount of time, I'm going to give it to you. And then we do some Q and a, we can go deeper. I told John, I asked John from the very beginning, I said, this may have to be a two parter. <laughs> All right. So first of all, you got to be coachable and teachable. You want to find a mentor and the best way to get one is to get in the room by service or to invest in yourself. I train people all the time. I just joined uh, two organizations last week. One organization uh, is a great friend of mine. So I paid $5,000 to be there because I need to be taken serious by this person who makes billions of dollars. The company he founded, uh, Priceline, they only do about $70 billion a year. He was a co-founder there, but also you bid booking.com. See, I can teach people to go to a higher level, but I must keep ascending myself. Another organization, board of directors, 25 grand. There was a time I couldn't do it. But don't ever let money be the reason it stops you because the money is always available. See, money always comes with, comes with invited and it stays where it's welcome. That means you're creating the value to entice money there. And you're creating the environment for money to stay with you. And you can give it away and share it and it will be replenished. And it's really about your paradigm, the energy, the frequency that you're operating on. The frequency that you're operating on. You know, as once said that you cannot excel to another level in your life in any aspect using the same level of thinking that has what you are. It's not you, it's me too, it's all of us. So we must elevate. It's not about what we know. It's not even about what we don't know. It really is about what we don't know about what we don't know. Dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction will get you to move, but you have to make a decision and get clarity, write that down, clarity, what is it that you want? And there is no procrastination. Heed the story of the man who would figure and plan of all the things that he intended to do. Yet when the time came for him to get in the game, he never put anything through. Or he dreamed with a smile of the after a while of all the things he'd do pretty soon. He was already at heart, he never would start. He would never quite get into tune. Yet if he had done all the things he'd begun, he'd be lifted amongst those of fame, but he would not produce. So he was of no use. Good intentions. Ah, he never win the game. It is easy to dream, to plan in a scheme, and let dreams drop out of sight. But only the ones who put through what their dreams bring to view will be the ones who will win the fight. It's going to be the poverty of your imagination. And it's going to be the limited thinking of what's possible for you. So you have to make a decision, I'm gonna shift. You're born and made in the image of your creator, the image of God. That means you are in the likeness. That means stop trying to put God into your likeness. There's no such thing in words, let's just get out, think outside of the box because now in our world, 
where John Shin lives, there is no box. There's only possibility. See? It's about understanding certain laws and principles that govern everything. And these laws are set by God, just like the law of gravity. We have nothing to do with it. Can't really explain it. We can't really try to come up with something close. But these laws exist and they're absolute. They are absolute. The law of vibration is the number one law. Everything has energy, everything moves. That's why somebody can stare at you and you can feel them staring at the back of your head. So you have to know how to tap into that and then trust your instincts, trust, become so intuitive that you trust your instincts and then they trust you. And you get in that state of flow when you get into that zone and everything clicks. So when you wake up in the morning, you get up with intention. What are you here for? What is your purpose? Spend some time in meditation, reverence, prayer, whatever it is that you do. Get set for the day because you don't go with the day. You don't go with the wind. You are the wind. The storm doesn't blow you. You blow. You decide. Your Jim Rohn said it's not the blowing of the wind. It's a set of the sail because the wind, the wind blows on us all. I'm having some fun with y'all. I'm having some fun with you guys. I don't have time to go into the six faculties, but I want to go into some of the speaking and communication things. And I want you to take some notes on it because this is the things that I teach in my class. And, and now we're launching a TV streaming network. We have events. So our speakers had somewhere to speak with our magazine. Uh, we created events for women because they were not able to go out there and make a hundred thousand dollars an hour, like the male counterparts. So we started to create those things and teach people how to do it because a rising tide really does float all boats. You see, John Shin is stronger as you are stronger. Anybody can make money, but there's not many people like John and Arlene that are interested in teaching you how to make more. They're not duplicating themselves. There is no competition. Everybody runs their own race, but you need a mentor, somebody that you can study, somebody that you can study. And I'd make any investment to make myself better. You know why? Because as you mentioned, we are priceless. So let's just talk about speaking, whether it be in public or even in your home or in management, wherever you are. Number one, communication is your next best energy, number one. Number two, you have to be effective in telling your story. Whether you want to date, you want to get married to somebody, you better have a good story to tell because I got some questions, okay? <laughs> What's the story? What's the deal? You know, you want some credit? What's the deal? You want some financing for your business? What's the deal? You want me to enroll into your company, to your vision, to your core values? Tell me the story. You have to get good at telling your story. In your story, you get good and masterful at taking people in a journey within themselves that they can never go on by themselves. How do you tell a story? How do you use your voice? How do you become fully self-expressed? Number one, you set yourself in state before you have to talk to anybody. In the morning, you put yourself in state. You design your life. You can tell the future if you're gonna write it. Now, will it be perfect? No. But if it gets off track, you know how to get back. Now, sometimes people say they're too busy. Now, write this down really quick. Ooh, this is going to be good. Time management. Write it down. Time management. We heard that term. But let me ask you the question. I'm going to answer it for you. What's the definition of time? You don't know. But there is a definition. And I don't want you ever not to know again. Because you're going to understand the definition of time. And once you get it, you're going to be a step above everybody else around you because you're elevating. That means you're moving your frequency up towards what you want. And, it's not, and see, what you want is who you become. You become what you're thinking about, okay? And don't short your change, short your change prices, people. Don't short change yourself, prices, people. Okay, so now, mm -hmm. whew, got excited, almost lost what I was gonna talk about. <laughs> All right, so you're elevating, you're elevating your thinking, what you want and who you are, and who you've always been, and now you're bringing them in alignment. You got to fake it till you make it. You got to act as if. Be there. Put it in front of you. Get a postcard and write down the things that you want to achieve. Okay. On one side of the card, write a summary of why you want it. And the other side of the card, you write down what you want. Put it in your pocket. From time to time, you're going to touch that card in your pocket. And it's going to trigger some things in your brain, some endorphins in your brain, some electrodes in your brain. That's going to give you a sensation and give you that picture back in your brain of what you want. Because see, see, the will is what's going to get you the discipline to stay focused. Will creates focus. When John F. Kennedy was asked, uh, when he went to his lead scientist, um, uh, what was his name? Um, bon, bon Braun, Dr. Von Braun. Say, Dr. Braun, I made this, this announcement. How can we get a man to the moon and bring him back safely? He said five words. 
the will to do it. Okay. So you want to trigger those things in your mind. Now, you're setting yourself in state every single day, intention, who are you going to be? That means you're not, when things go wrong, you don't have to go wrong with it. And it's going to take some practice, but you get to the point you can navigate these days. And you won't have good days or bad days. It'll just be days because every day is a great day. Some days, just even better. Now, the second thing is to remember when you get on that stage, whether it be on your job, your management, or your speaker, you're not the star, you're the director. The director's job is to help the stars elevate because as the stars around you elevate, then you win. See, you're talking to your children, you help the, the star elevate and you win. Your spouse, they, your significant other, they elevate and you win. Your job, they elevate and you win. On a stage, you elevate and they win, okay? So now, when you go there, now we're gonna teach you what I call F30. You play out in your mind what the first 30 seconds are gonna be. Paint the picture, tell the story, create the movie, create the scene. You're the creator. This is your movie, you're doing it. How is this gonna unfold for you? So you don't just go in there all willy-nilly or helter skelter, you go in there with intention. Okay, now, prepared for the things that can happen, like the internet going down. You move around, you navigate, but you go in there in with intention of what you want to create. And if something happens, disrupts it, you gotta come back because at least you know where you're supposed to be. Now, here's the next thing. Understand personality types, okay? Understand personality types. It's gonna be very helpful in storytelling or keeping one's attention and learning how to speak into the listening of another human being. Sometimes you have people around you and you don't really get along that well. And maybe sometimes it irritates you a little bit. Most of the time it's a personality trait. So I'm gonna use uh, this example of the shark, the dolphin, the urchin, and the whale. The shark is a person very aggressive, pretty much money motivated. They like the big jewelry, they like the diamonds, they like the expensive cars, they drive the money suits, the money ties, the money outfits, right? Those are your sharks. Now sharks play to win all the time, but they can come off being a little uncaring. Okay, then you have your dolphins. They love to have fun. If they got colors in their hair, dolphin. Big earrings, dolphin, jewelry, dolphin. Dolphins are the life of the party. They're usually late for everything. And they're not neat and organized at all. They have six or seven junk drawers in their home. We all know them, but they, we love them. They're a lot of fun. Then we have the urchin, U-R-C-H-I-N. The urchin is very analytical, okay? They're going to dress in conservative colors. If they're an engineer, they're locked in as an urchin. They need information. They hate things to start late, and they don't like hype. You can't sell them with hype and excitement. They need information. You see, you take a dolphin who loves hype and excitement, you give them a lecture and their behind goes asleep and the brain can only grasp what the butt can endure. So then you have your whale. Your whales are soft-spoken. They wear earth tunnels. They're nurturers. Now whales and urchins move very slow. They're very cautious. Sharks and dolphins move fast. They make decisions quickly. Now, when you take a personality profile, and I'll, you know, John shares half one or I'll get it to him or whatever. But when you take these profiles, you'll learn what you are most of the time, but you're going to focus on what you're not. So when you're speaking, you can paint. And when you paint, you touch everyone in the audience and you won't lose the focus of one person. Nobody ever goes to sleep on me and people don't walk out. They just don't. And you do it on an authentic level where there's no ego. I allow myself to be so vulnerable that you don't just hear me. You go to feel me because I am connecting with you. Because when you understand energy, that means I'm taking the energy I have in myself, the life force that's never that's always replenished, that's never on E, and I'm giving it out, and you will feel it. Speaking to the listening and the nervous system of another human being. Sometimes my wife calls me and says, baby, come home and speak to my nervous system. Oh, that's a lot of fun. Okay, let me get back on the track. All right. She's really cute. Okay, so now. So you're speaking and you're painting, you're speaking and you're painting. Next, you learn how to use your voice. Your voice is a soundtrack of a movie and the soundtrack is what makes the movie. So when you're speaking, you control the tempo of the nervous system. You put all these things together, you paint your point and you create pictures, and signals and energy and frequency. Now you're taking a person on a journey within themselves. They cannot go without themselves. You have to guide it. That means you have to come from a pure place. When you're speaking, believe it. Speak it to their listening. Find out what's important to them and speak their life. Now, if I'm loud and fast, that's going to create impact. Set yourself on fire in the world to come out and see you burn. Ah. Loud and slow is for emphasis. 
when you set yourself on fire, the world will come out and see you burn. That's emphasis. All right? Low and fast is for engagement. When you set yourself on fire, the world will come out and see you burn. And low and slow is for emotion. When you set yourself on fire, the world will come out and see you burn. And if you practice those things, and I don't have time to go over and over and over again, you practice that, you'll see a shift in your nervous system. You'll see a shift. You'll see a shift in the way you feel when you say it. So really quick, repeat after me. We're going to go loud and fast. Say A, E, I, O, U. Now go fast. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. Now emphasis. A, E, I. Oh, you, you see the difference. Now, low and fast, A-E-I-O-U, A-E-I-O-U, A-E-I-O-U. You can see your whole body chemistry change. And low and slow is A-E-I-O-U. Your body calms. And you can direct the energy of your audience, if it's an audience of two, by the way you use your voice. If somebody's high, you bring them low. And there's certain things you can do like embedded commands and open loops. You know, the brain is a closure seeking mechanism. The brain always seeks closure. So use words like imagine, take people into a vision state. There's a story of a little kid named Johnny. He's in third grade. He's in art class. He's drawing this picture. The teacher looks over his shoulder and says, Johnny, what are you drawing? Johnny looks at the teacher and says, I'm drawing a picture of God. Teacher smiles and looks at Johnny and says, Johnny knows, nobody knows what God looks like. Johnny looks back at the teacher and says, they will in a minute. Ah, vision. What do you want to create? Everything you want is available to you when you tap into the right frequency. The laws of expectancy, you must expect it. I never met a winner that didn't expect to win. And you have to be there with the faith. See, because it's in the thinking. Whatever you feed is what you're going to nourish. That's why Job said, the things I have feared will come upon me. You, you lose control and you, you, you say, don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree. You hit the tree. There's only one tree and it was wide open space, but you are focusing on the tree. So when you lose control or you see it coming, be like the race car. When they train race car drivers, they teach them, never look at the wall, always look at where you want the car to go. It's a shift in your thinking. That means you have to separate how you're feeling from what you really know to be true. Now, I gave you a lot of stuff. I apologize. I usually deep see some of this stuff I teach, man, it's five days or 12 hours a day. But, and there's a lot more to it. But when I use the word imagine, whatever I say next, the brain has to follow. So right now, if you can, if you're not driving really quickly, in 30 seconds, imagine a waterfall. Imagine a water coming off of the rocks. See the water splashing. Hear the water. Hear the water. Hear it. Get close to it. Feel the breeze of the water. Get close to the water. You can feel the breeze, the water rushing. You hear it clearly. Now some water hits a rock and it splashes on your face, on your cheek. Feel the water just splashed. Open your eyes. Most of you all felt that water because once you say imagine, the brain seeks whatever comes next. There's a lot we can go here. I just wanted to kind of open up the rabbit hole. This is part of my life work that never ends. But I want to open it at this time if there's some questions. I know John said we had to 10 after, so maybe we go about five or seven minutes with some questions. If you have any questions for me, I'd love to try my best to answer them. I see you, but I can't hear you. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's, do some Q, let's do some Q&A, baby. Let's one. do some Q&A. Okay, what is time? Here we go. Yeah, I knew I was moving too fast. Write this down. Time is a series of events consistently moving from the past through the present to the future. Time is a series of events consistently moving from the past through the present to the future. There's always something that was done, is being done, and will be done. A breath that was taken, is taken, and will be taken. Time is a series of events. Management should be easy, but nobody knows the definition, even though they manage everything. 
To manage means to control. If I'm managing John's company, my job is to control the, the, control the environment he has put me in, in task of according to his philosophies and his policies. So if to control is, is management and time is events, put it together, event control. Control events. What's an event? Everything. And make everything an event. And you control what's going to happen here, 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 here. Now, once you understand there's a definition of something, this is like going to the doctor. Something's wrong, you can't figure it out, a lot of anxiety, but once you know what the problem is, now we can kind of deal with it. There's a way. Time management, event control, okay? He, he or she who controls the events controls their life. Okay? <laughs> Ooh, brain overload. <laughs> Well, here's a few more that just came in. One just came in and says, what are some questions you ask to each type, whether they're a shark, urchin, whale, dolphin, which allows you to know who are you talking to very quickly? Oh, very good. First of all, two things. Number one, you can tell sometimes by what, where they dress. If they have blue hair, dolphin, don't even worry about it. They got big earrings, dolphin, don't worry. But anything that looks like fun, nose earring, that's your dolphin speaking loudly, okay? Now, if they're conservative, like if they tell you, if somebody's an engineer and I ask them, what do you do? I'm an engineer. I know they're like an urchin. Now they have, we all have all the personalities, but what are we locked into? Now, somebody like a John Shin, he's more balanced between almost all of them. He loves to have fun. He's a shark, a dolphin, urchin, well. I am a dolphin shark in normal situations. And when pressure comes, I turn into a shark. I, but with intention, become an urchin and a whale. Okay, now my whale is more balanced now because my life is about nonprofit and giving. So kind of balance that. So you can work on it and you can always go by asking someone a question like, but first one is, what do you do for a living? What do you do? You know, questions control the conversation. What do you, what do, you do for a living? Wow, do you have a family? Really, what do you like about what you do? What do you like about it? What do you love about your family? You have kids? You love your kids? The answers are, see, I always ask a question where I know the answer is going to be yes. Most people, when I say you love your kids, and they say, no, they're little brats, they're playing. They literally love their kids, right? Unless they're in the trunk of their car, then of course I take your word for it. So when I ask some questions, I'm asking the questions I know the answer is going to be yes, because I know that communication is about agreement, but also I want to open up the door for them to tell me their values. What do they value? Because if you want to move a person to anything, you have to know what they care about. And if they don't, if you don't know what they care about, you can't put on them what you care about. And a lot of times that's one of the things that we do. So if by asking questions, asking their profession, you can look at their desk and see if their desk is real sloppy, dolphin. If it's really neat, urchin. You can tell. Look, is that a bunch of toilet paper behind you? <laughs> Okay, that's see, that's his dolphin playing because he could just do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody wants, right? You know, uh, they're hoarding it from Costco. You can't get in there. They, even Costco says you can only have one. I'm like, yeah, but I mean, we got a big family, you know? Uh, it's hilarious. Well, <laughs> well, I want to come loot your house, so we won't give up the address. Okay. <laughs> yeah, come on down. All right, All right this came from this comes from uh, Jonathan. He says. James, thanks. Great info for connecting with the audience with the fast, slow, high, low. Can, can you repeat that again? Okay. That, that was the question. Loud and fast is for impact. So when I speak loud and sometimes when I speak, it's not for you to remember everything I'm saying. It's, it's the way I make you feel and the triggers I, I lay there. So loud and fast is for impact. I'm going to move the nervous system and move the energy in the room. If I have you repeat something and I do it loud and fast, I'm bringing your energy level up and I'm bringing you as a part of the talk and a part of everything I said. You won't remember it, but you will feel it. It'll come as subconscious. So loud and slow is for emphasis. That's where your applaud lines come in. Your loud and slow. Um, 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 uh, when you reach for the stars, even when you fall short, you come down with stardust in your hand. That's emphasis, okay? Then you go low and fast is for engagement. Now, low and fast, loud and fast, loud and fast, I'm talking to a lot of sharks. I'm going to hit, 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 okay? When I go into the emphasis part, I'm playing with the dolphins and the sharks. 
when I go low and fast, I'm talking to the urchins because they don't have to pick on every word, but they need to know that I know. Boom. And then low and slow is for emotion. I'm talking to the dolphins. Dolphins are nurturers. They're very emotional and their language, their language is love. And love is soft. If you slow it down, you soften it. And you touch your information, your content, i give an example. I want to introduce this gentleman who has documented himself in, his, in our industry. He knows 110% of the facts. This gentleman has so much documentation, we ran out of paper. I'm talking to the urchins. This gentleman has positioned himself, made a tremendous amount of money. This gentleman is on the other side of money. As a matter of fact, he walks in the bank, writes a check in the bank amounts. I'm talking to the sharks and the dolphins. He loves to have a lot of fun. That's the dolphins. And then you lower your voice. But more importantly, he is willing to help anyone who's willing to learn your whales. And on a subconscious level, I like him. I like him because we like people who are like us. Every person in your circle that you're around, they're either like you or they have some quality that you admire and look up to and you feel good about. Or you're not there. And as John would say, likability is the bridge to trust, right? That's right. That's right. Forget. That was three years ago. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Um, so I have a question for you. So one of the questions that I get right now from a lot of people, they're like, okay, John, you know, we always talk about prospecting. We go out, we're supposed to meet people. How do we do that when you're quarantined and you're supposed to be at home? There are no networking events. How do you meet people? Do you get that question? And if so, what is your response to that? I get it and solve it. <laughs> Number one, you can create your own meetup. You can create your own Facebook group. Um, there's a lot of platforms out there where you can bring people to you who are like you. So think about what you value the most or what are you good at? What do you, what do, you do that you're really good at? Because if you're good at something and you put out there that you are going to attract people who either want this, who are like this, who have this in common, then they're looking for you, number one. Number, one. number two, you're quarantined, but we still go out for some reasons. That's number two. Number three, every person... By the time you're 25 years of age, you've already met 500 people that you know, even if you know them by nickname or by the lady at the cleaners. You know people. Number four, you can go through referrals. Number five, with there's so much uh, technology out here now and so many apps out here, you actually can go through some qualified lead lists and you can play that game. Referrals always work a lot, with, like especially in insurance business, financial. Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? And the people you know, know other people. So one of the things you do is learn how to tap root really good. Tap rooting means that I may know John and John may not uh, be on a board with what I'm doing. He may or may not, he may get in there and fall off. But before any of that happens, I want to create a relationship with John where John feels comfortable, comfortable enough to introduce me to somebody else. And then do the same process with that. Tap rooting means you go down, down, down. For example, if you're building a network marketing organization, your top people normally come through five other groups of interactive people that you met. It's most of the time, not the people that you know personally, because the people you know personally, they kind of judge you or the law of familiarity kicks in. And sometimes they don't want to feel like they're following a friend. Sometimes they don't want to feel like that you're their boss. And sometimes they see in you what they feel they are not. So now you make them feel bad and nervous and insecure and they don't want to say it, but it's not even about you. It's about where they are and where they feel. So remember, there's no shortages of people. Get creative and ask yourself the question, how can I go out there and meet more people? What are some of your kids' uh, teachers, your kids' doctors? You don't know that person personally, but if I have a doctor, that's a warm market relationship. He's going to tell me to take all my clothes off and put this on and then put his finger all the different parts of my body. <laughs> that's a relationship. <laughs> So have fun with it. Talk to everybody. You go to the doctor's office, you say hello, smile with your eyes. Smile with your eyes. You know, I was in a resort uh, uh, this week, John, with my family. And a uh, resort we actually do our events in, the one you were going to come to. It's only 45 minutes away, but what difference does it make in a resort if I'm 45 minutes or five hours away? I'm not home, and they've got the same things, right? But I love this because it's slower there. And John Paul Adoria, who owns Paul Mitchell Hair Products and Patron, just saw Patron, he owns it now, uh, Hyatt Lodge. So I'm there and I've done events there. So I knew a few people, 
but it's so comfortable. I talk to everybody and we have something to talk about through our mask. I went swimming every day and I met people every day and I prospected people every day. I, work, I worked out every day and I met people every day with the mask on and I would pick up my phone and do my, uh, my lives and I would speak the language, making sure they could hear me and see who tump taps into me. Here's the other thing. You know, sometimes finding quality people can be like finding a needle in a haystack. It is easier to find a needle if you become a magnet. So you have to have the right energy out there. That's why frequency is so important. If you want to copy, John, if you want, I'll give, I'll give some of your people copies of the books. If you got the first 10 people to respond to you, if you want, I'll just send them a copy. I do it all the time. Uh, of the book, Five Frequencies of High Performance, because when you tap into a higher frequency, you're gonna, you could be at, man, you can be at home and you can make somebody feel you. Use Zoom, use conference calls, get creative, ask yourself the question, because at the, at the end of every question, the answer is already in the question. Okay. Isn't that, you guys, was this like one of the most profound, like, uh, podcasts? Like, some of you guys are still going, whoa, like, right? Because James just took you guys to a whole nother level, right? A lot of you guys are like, well, how do you go prospecting? See, that's like the lower level stuff, right? He just took you to another paradigm, and it, it was like so powerful, so deep, Um all right, guys, we're running out of time, and I do have uh, a couple questions here. This one's a pretty deep question, uh, James. This is, uh, says, can you tell me how uh, it is that one can interpret a heavenly vision from God or a higher power? And um, why does a vision seem to take too long? Somebody told me a long time ago that God is old and God is slow. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it's long, but sometimes you have to grow into the person that's right for the vision. If you're going to trust God, you got to trust God. Either God is or God isn't. And mm. you got to trust that time. He's, God says in his word that my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours. So now if you get it to, I, I'll tell you this, had I not found my mentorship at a point where I was hurting and I was dissatisfied with my life, I may, be not, I may not have listened intently. And, I, you know, like my grandmother said, uh, used to say, you should be uh, grateful for what you have. You should be, like she said, you should be satisfied for what you have. And I think she was wrong. I should be happy. You should be happy for what you have. But you can't be satisfied because life is like walking up an escalator that's coming down. You keep stop, you quit walking up, you lose ground. And that fall can be very, very hard. A lot of people depended upon us. So if God has given you a message, trust it, and then start walking into it. Because God's language is very soft and silent. God doesn't scream at you normally. That's, that, that conversation, you'll get it in a spiritual level. You'll know when to move. So just because you got it, Abraham was told to go to the promised land. He never made it. Moses started to take his people and get them to freedom. He never could go. Sometimes your journey is to go and to create something, and you'll find what your true calling and mission is, because it may not be what you think it is. Mm. And it may be, and I promise you, if it's not, it'll be more, it'll be greater and more rewarding because at the end of the day, money has nothing to do with it. It's the byproduct of it to knowing your life freaking matters, that your life matters, man. And that is so cool. Every day you're just happy. Why? Because you can be happy. <laughs> mm hmm Awesome. Okay, uh, James, you've helped us immensely. Uh, how can how can we provide value for you? What can we do for you? How about if everyone gets your book? Where can, I got people texting me right now. It's like, how do I get James's book? So how do we buy this book from you? Well, you can get it on Amazon, but if you would do this, um, and Amazon is like 20 bucks in shipping. If you would just um, send it through me through, go and get it to me through, uh, go on Amazon. I was going to say do it through PayPal because then, see, 100% of that goes right to the nonprofit, even what I pay to get it. But do it in Amazon and we'll do the same thing and you can get that book there. But we also have a radio show every Friday at 2 p.m. Central Standard, uh, 12 noon Pacific, called The James Dentley Show. And you can go to thejamesdentleyshow.com and click on Watch Live and it'll be on Facebook or you get that broadcast and the previous broadcast. Uh, through Voice America, you can just get that, that. All that stuff's on the website, and we're launching the streaming TV network. So I'm going to be talking to John 
because we need to give each and every one of you all a platform and a voice. It's going to be really it's cool. And it's all, let me just say this one other thing. John, mm -hmm. you know, man, you, my wife and I, we were looking at uh, uh, doing some things with finances and where would we invest. And my, uh, my mutual friend, Bill, called me and told me he had a person. And my wife, she's so brilliant. She says, James, you know John. Why don't you just call John and ask him? I said, why the hell I didn't think of that? You know, it's crazy. It's certain things in front of your face because we all have these blind spots. And I want to tell you guys that Mr. Shin has helped me immensely. And still now with the things we're doing with trust, with things on how we can, he called me, he called me today and said, hey man, your money's doing really well. I forgot to even look at it. I've been so busy trying to build a network. So you got to understand not just the brilliance of the man you're working with, but really his heart. He's a lot of fun and he's going to tell you some stuff, but I want to tell you, because I don't know you, and I'm not sure about what you guys are doing, but I do know you because we're kindred spirits because you're here and you're here because you're supposed to be here. So I would say that don't let money be an issue. If money's not there, then find it, get it, get money because, you know, but you have to raise your level of vibration and raise your frequency up to what it is you want because you're on 107.3, but you want to listen to 102.4. It ain't going to happen. There's a disconnect. So just raise it up. And I never met a winner that didn't expect to win. Expect it. Get the pictures of it. Prepare for it. Work for it. Work, just walk, keep walking towards it and watch you just elevate. You fake it till you make it. You act as if. And you're not with arrogance, but with the humility, knowing that all things are possible. And for those of you who say you believe in God, then you better believe. Because he says all things are possible. I never leave you nor forsake. A lot of stuff is there. So either going to believe it and own it and step into it and be patient. Because it'd be on the time. It's like little children. We want what we want. But, but we parents need to tell you, well, first you need to eat some vegetables. And then we can talk about getting some soda <laughs> or some chips or cookies. Okay? That's right. So that's that's right. The, that's the deal. All right. Well, there you go, everyone. Let's give it up for James Dentley, everybody. Come on. Put your hands up. Raise your hand. Let me make Let's go. Whoa. I know you guys are all up on your feet now. That was so deep, so profound. Can we all like literally go to Amazon right now, get his book? Can we show some appreciation for what James just did for you guys, what he did for me? Everybody pick up a book. Holidays are around a season. Why get one? You might as well pick up five or 10 and give them out as holiday presents, right? I mean, you know, it's not like James or I or anybody else. We get rich because we're selling books, you guys. Uh, we'd be lucky if we make 50 cents to a dollar or, okay, a dollar a book, in fact. Maybe not even that. I mean, these days, right, because Amazon just keeps on punching out down those uh, rates. But, uh, you yeah. guys, we don't do this. We just, we just want you guys to win. Really, I'm serious. Like, we, we want you to succeed, you know. I mean, geez, I mean, James and I could probably – uh, go out there and charge tens of thousands of dollars, hundred thousand dollars for our talk conversations and uh, you know our thoughts that we want to share. But we we here we are, James. For James right now, it's two hours later, or is it three hours later? Chicago is uh, Midwest, so it's ten. It's ten fifteen. He can be with his family, his wife. By the way, James, say hello to Kara for me. We love her and and uh, uh, just uh, thank the world of both of you guys. Truly, you're amazing. By the way, and, and, you know, he's talking about my kids. His kids equally are just uh, amazing. I mean, they're out there doing stuff with James and, and very involved in the things that they do. So, um, you guys, thank you so much, James, for being here tonight with us. Uh, I've got a few announcements, you guys. Please um, email. Go to the James Dantley Show. He's got them on Fridays. Follow him on Instagram. Order his book on Amazon. Get, seriously, okay? Um, there you have it. Okay, let me just go over a, a couple of quick announcements here real fast, uh, just so you guys know. This is James Dantley's, uh, 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 let's see, uh, Instagram. So go to James Dantley Inspires. Follow him there. Uh, just so you guys know, um, we've got, uh, let's see here, why is my thing so... Okay, here we go. Uh, this coming Thursday, just so you guys know, I've got this guy named Ivan Londono is going to come in and talk to you guys about mortgages and lending and, you know, what really is a good interest rate, some of the junk fees that these lenders and people will charge you, watch out for, what are some of the, you know, watch out, you know, kind of thing. Uh, there's going to be great training. And then next Tuesday, 
Got a guy named Mario Bayona. A lot of you guys know this guy. Uh, this guy's tearing it up in business. Young guy, but yet just crushing it out there. Excuse me. So Mario will be on next week. Make sure you tune in and let everyone else know to join us here on Tuesday Talks. And then uh, we have another special screening of the movie. So if you missed it last time, hey, lucky for you, October 23rd, we have another special screening of the movie at 6.30 p.m. Make sure you guys register at tgrlegacymovie.com. And then that's the link down below. Other than that, you guys, I just want you guys to win. Let's close out the year really, really fast. Um, I just want you guys to know that I'm here. I, I put my phone number there for you guys so that you guys can hear, uh, put my phone number there so you guys can reach out to me, uh, text me, call me, whatever. I am literally just one call away.